Welcome to the Fear Fiction Podcast. Fear Fic is the term for short horror fiction, mostly posted on the web. It includes any and all related subgenres. Join three assholes talking basement goose slime beast, inebriated interstellar traveler abysme, and irritable ghostly man whore dead palette as they read all stories horror and internet related, paragraph by paragraph, and bullshit while they do it. From adolescent revenge fantasies to subtle postmodern narratives about real life events and everything in between, they read it and critique. You better believe it. Kick it to the cold open, white boy. So I was playing Dead by Daylight before we started recording today. <sighs> and um, Dead by Daylight is interesting in that, as it is asymmetrical, if you're killer, you can choose your lobby, essentially, if you see four players who are clearly a much higher level than you just by what they're wearing um, because of certain achievements you can be like no i'm skipping that or you can skip if you see someone has ttv in their name that means they're on twitch and you don't want to be in someone's fucking twitch video you can skip hmm. so i did this like three times because rank resets kind of fucked up right now but um, i get into the lobby and the first name that pops up is butt fart mm-hmm. and me and my sophomore humor just start laughing I'm like, okay, well, where's this going to go? Next one that shows up, lesbian. Mm-hmm. No no extra letters or numbers, just lesbian. And it's immediately... a haunted game revealing all of your fetishes, yes. <laughs> yes. Put <laughs> fart lesbians. <laughs> so I was like, fuck it, I don't even care if I get stomped. Oh, let's just do this one. And um, I was playing Michael Myers, and you, one of his mechanic is he has an obsession, like he's obsessed with Laurie Strode, has to kill her. <laughs> yeah. And my obsession, of course, was butt fart. <laughs> And so I just, like, hit butt fart and just left them on the ground. I was trying to, you know, go kill other uh, players. And I just happened to focus lesbian because she just kept showing up in front of me. Mm -hmm. And so Paprika's just looking over my shoulder going, so you're obsessed with butt fart and you're currently tunneling a lesbian. Mm -hmm. What what is wrong (laughs) with you? And it was a fun game. Michael Brappers? (laughs) Is that a thing? (laughs) The Uh, shape of things to come. Do you smell that? Me neither. Start farting. God damn it. <laughs> so did you down lesbian or what? Uh, I think I killed her on hook. Hate no crime. Her Hate time. crime. Hate yeah, crime. I know. It, look, it looks bad. It looks real did bad. Butt fart made it lesbian? out, though. <laughs> butt fart made it out. Butt, butt farts butt. always do make it out. Butt fart slipped out when you least expected it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I downed butt fart and no one came to save butt farts except for like at the very end. And they were probably just sick of spending the whole match just like lying on the ground, not being able to do anything. So they just like abandoned the rest of the team and then just like escaped out the escape hatch at the very end. And it was like, butt, fuck you guys. <laughs> the when butt a butt fart, fart is near the end, there's, there's nothing you can do. They're there just going nothing. to escape. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so you chased a lesbian and downed a butt fart. <laughs> yep. Okay. Yep. It was a very typical game of Dead by Daylight. Okay. Yeah, when I played Dead by Daylight, I changed my name. I, I put my Steam name as I'm this as I think I, I put it as first time playing this because sure. I wanted to you know make sure people knew I'm not trying to fuck around. I'm not trying to mm-hmm. screw you over. I don't know what I'm doing. And then I just kept it that way for like five rounds because I was like, eh, <laughs> at least they'll think I'm they'll they'll think I'm you know it's my first time, so I don't ever have to get better. <laughs> Brandon. So Dead by Daylight is that <laughs> game that isn't good, right? Uh, I'm enjoying it more and more. It's actually improving a lot. They have dedicated servers now. Uh, the devs, unlike other certain multiplayer games we talk about, the devs are trying very, very hard to balance it as much as they can and provide. Okay, more. that's right. <laughs> if this is your first time listening to the Fear Fiction podcast, we have a bone to pick with the uh, <laughs> Call of Duty balance team. Yeah, Black we don't. Suck we don't it. like what they're doing with the tomahawks, and just think that they need to rework that. More like uh, Call of Duty, am I right? Am I right, guys? I call a butt fart. All right. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> so I got down with some cob lops. Um, so I, I don't know. I just still, I just, every time I watch a little bit of Dead by Daylight, I'm just like, I'm bored. Mm. I couldn't imagine playing this. It's, I mean, you, you have to, it's like League of Legends. If you watch it and you don't see any appeal, you're never going to see it. But if you do enjoy it, even watching it is because there's just a lot of complexity and mm-hmm. homework you can do to play it. You don't have to, but yeah. it's good if you do. So very it's just very a- complex. Stabby men, stab people, doing quick time events. Yeah, sure. 
<laughs> and all the perks and all the items. I just, I just uh-huh. don't understand the concept of people playing a game and then they're like, oh, I'm in this game with this uh, killer that has a frustrating ability. And it's just like, what? It, what's the frustrating ability? Oh, they're good at killing you. And it's just like, they're they're a killer. It's a gross um, oversimplification, but all right. Well, uh, well, it's the same thing in Siege where people are like, oh my god, I hate that this character has like a gadget, and it's like, go fucking play any other. It's go go play Counter Strike. Why are you playing Siege if you don't? It's like, man, I don't like these gadgets. I want this game to be about one shot headshots. It's like, well, it already yeah. has that. Um, <laughs> go play CS:GO. Or you can play CS:GO, bud. Go out like, in real life and no, wait, don't touch grass. <laughs> Go buy a gun and shoot people. I think if Dead by Daylight would just, and I know I've said this before, if they would just add something to do other than clicking in a circle for survivors, I would be, well, I would probably be interested in it, but I don't want to do that over and over and over again for the rest it's, of my life. Really, it's really to save frustrating. Survivors as well, and that doesn't Yeah, but I ain't, I ain't saving those assholes. And well, you have to run from killers, and that has nothing to do with quick time events. If you look at uh, th- this game that gets maligned of, you know, Friday the 13th, and everyone's like, man, this game is glitchy, and blah, 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 and they're not responsive, and everyone, that's like the black sheep. That's like the the competitor to Dead by Daylight, and it's so far behind. Well, that game it, looks like it has so much more fucking variety it does, to it. It does. It, it got sued into oblivion. <laughs> well, can I tell you why that game failed in the beginning? I, I don't know, you guys probably already know this to a certain extent. Because so it's like, huh? It's annoying Twitch bait. It was full, like absolutely full, of trolling and, and team killing. Yeah. Yeah. And you could not play a single round without team killers and, you know, people trolling and ruining things and so on and so forth. Yeah. And they actually had a, uh, like a minor scandal. I don't know what to call it because it doesn't really matter. Where two, uh, girlfriends of people on the development team oh, no. were majorly, majorly, majorly doing this stuff, like killing other players and, you know, throwing keys in the water, you know, different things like that, and, you know, so on and so forth, you know, baiting people in chat, you know, different things, being toxic, to the point where people were, like, starting to leave reviews about, you know, there's these two girls that are dating the dev team that are ruining every round I'm in, (laughs) and it's like, (laughs) no, but they never get banned and nothing ever happens to them, and it just was like... For that early launch, it was a it was fucking poison, and nobody wanted to ever touch it again because they got so mad. You know? Well, and there's people in the forums on uh, Dead by Daylight going, "Can we add um, in-game chat? Just even if it's just proximity based." And everyone's like, "No, no. number one, <laughs> I don't want you blasting fucking music out your mic. Yeah. You know, when I get near you, I don't want to be harassed. This game's toxic enough. Also, uh, remember Friday the Thirteenth, <laughs> and, and and you know, honestly, that it's unfortunate because I want there to be a competitor to right. Dead by Daylight. I want my goofy version with like Frankenstein goofy. and Zat and Maxi. you know just other ridiculous shit like i want that but it's it, it's just it's dominating the genre a bit too hard right now i have well that's a th- oh, you, you know we play uh well we play you know scp secret lab and everything and mm-hmm. the proximity based chat and that is just every once in a while like a lot of the times you'll run into someone who's not terribly funny but if you can just start a funny conversation mm-hmm. and there's instantly fun and if like someone's mic spamming it like doesn't get away like doesn't cause a problem because you could just mute them right and a lot of the times because of that no one wants to get muted so if they're going to mic spam they're going to do something you know yeah. funny they're going to go over the goddamn you know loudspeaker and it's just like bell 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 it's like yes <laughs> right. awesome okay we're having a good time funny <laughs> meme uh but i, I think that Trying to take a game like Dead by Daylight serious and like the fact that it's forced ranked is just Mm -hmm. fucking hilarious. It's so fucking hilarious that that game is toxic because there's no reason for it to be. It's, it's the, it is such a cookie clicker. They had all the, they had pro Dead by Daylight. They had pro matches. (laughs) Well, they have tournaments now. Oh my god. There's another way to do it. Um, but yeah, all the complaints are like, in the, in the beginning it was, the killers are too powerful, and then of course you realize, no, the survivors are too powerful because there's four of you, and killers are routinely, routinely just stomped all the time. But, um, in the beginning it was always just like, this game's in balance, like, no, it's asymmetrical, you are confusing the two. You, you, you probably, you, you will not win every match. It is not designed that way. Learn this soon. I have two stories, and I guess we should probably get to the actual story in a few minutes, but sure. uh, okay. I have a good and a bad 
uh, story about in-game voice chat. I'll do the bad one first. Friday the 13th, playing the game, trying to go around, trying to do things. I hear in the distance... And I put my hands up, family at a yeah, playing yeah. my favorite song. And if that, and this person comes running up, shoots me right in the fucking head, and keeps running. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> yeah, <it> was. <laughs> like fuck you, dude. But then the good story is uh, on the round of Overwatch. Oh, that was the bad story. That was a, that, <laughs> that was, was awesome. bad because I I couldn't. That was the end of the game for me and everybody else who was killed by that person. Good story is I'm sitting in Overwatch in a group, right, waiting for the final member. Final member joins, their name is Star Wars Music. Okay? <laughs> Character's name is Star Wars Music. The mic, everybody goes, oh, hey, Star Wars Music. Uh, and you have a microphone, mic lights up, you know, the little icon, and you hear, yeah. bum, 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 bum. Everybody's like, that's the Avengers music, and he leaves. <laughs> <laughs> he dips, like, ooh. <laughs> they caught me. <laughs> Shit. Jesus. <laughs> oh, shit. Anyway. Uh, th- no, I like that. No, I-, I think that if you're going to do that and just have emerging gameplay, I think you need to lean into it. I don't know why you wouldn't want to have Mike Chat and Dead by Daylight. The unless, is unless... RP, I'm telling you. RP games. The, well, that's, well, the, no. that's the, the issue. The matches are too short to do yeah. that. That's, so here's the issue. I think people are going to, when they, if you have people chatting and coordinating and have a coordinated team, people are going to realize, oh my god, there is nothing to this game, and it's really formulaic, mm. and there's well, no Well, you reason. already do. It's called Survive with Friends, and you just get on Discord, and then that's why survivors are more powerful than killers. So they need to make two different cues, number one for that. But, like, show me a game that isn't massively formulaic, that's uh, multiplayer and popular. Among us. <laughs> <laughs> sure. I, I don't know. Like, there's, I could, I could say, like, literally, I could name any game. Literally, I don't think. I think Dead by Daylight is just insanely formulaic. Mm. I think, I think you could say Overwatch isn't that way. Siege isn't that way. How is Overwatch I, not formulaic? There's like how many actual game modes that people take seriously? Overwatch kill people, is, take points. Overwatch is formulaic uh, by by virtue of players forcing it to be that way, like yes, like precisely. scolding you and precisely. deriding you and throwing you out if you don't play the formulaic way. Okay, yes, what about but, the gameplay mechanics? It's take points, shoot people, take points. That's it. In very in very different people. ways. It's like saying that League of Legends is formulaic. It's like, well, even if I don't appreciate League of Legends, I wouldn't say it's formulaic. The point is, take points and shoot people, and half the player base of Overwatch doesn't do one of those. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but then how is Dead by Daylight formulaic? Yes, you do. Ha- you get gens or get kills, but you have different characters, different powers, different builds, and there's tons and tons and tons of variety there. That's what makes League of Legends different. It's always just kill, kill the other side's towers, but you have hundreds of options of how to play hundreds of different characters. So I don't see how it's more or less formulaic than any other because, game. Because every other, every killer has to fit into that sort of humanoid mold, and there's not like. Yeah, you could be like ten. Uh, my killer's ten percent quicker. My ten killer's ten percent slower, but they do more damage. It's like I, I, no, I don't they all know. do the same damage. That's not what that's it. Well, uh, well, you are just making my argument for me. <laughs> the, the, but that's the radius of tear radius and move speed are different across some killers, but that's not what makes them unique. And that's still it's the fact that they have different perks, and you can mix and match perks from other killers and have a unique uh, power from every killer means that it's not formulaic compared to other games. What if they add Brigitte to, uh, to Dead by Daylight as a killer? I would be into that. I would I would check that out. Yeah, give it a month. If it, if it, if it was uh, the the original Brigitte, then yes, I would. <laughs> God damn it. Are we reading a story or are we doing a... No, th- th- I guess this is the episode. Let's, well, I it's guess only we can f- talk... It's a 14-minute <laughs> opening. We've done worse. We've had we, a lot we worse. We have done worse. We've had a lot worse. My wife wants me to get pregnant. Okay, mm-hmm. yeah, but we really should get to the story. <laughs> uh, do we need to provide the context of this? Yeah, yeah, go ahead and so... context us. We read um, the, 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 the very famous uh, Joe Camel episode. We read a story, and then Slime Beast made a joke that broke me for about 25 minutes. Yeah. And within that 25 minutes, we moved on to a different story by the author Short Story 1 about a guy whose wife and children need him to wear a dress every day or they get angry. Mm-hmm. And we, we did read and critique it, but I kind of wasn't mentally present for most of it. 
And lo and behold, months and months later, I get a message on r slash creepypasta of, hey, I found your reading of my story. I fucking it was stop great. it. I'm going to sue you, it said. <laughs> I'm going to sue the pants off of you. I <laughs> uh, said, I really enjoyed it. Um, do you want to read more? I said, well, first of all, thank you for being a good sport about it and seeing past our stupid silliness. Wait, wait, wait. He said, oh, no, I thought it was great. Wait, 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 wait. You realize I can see... I could see all the mod messages from the Creepypasta wiki, so I can see what you said. I, I can read it off right now. Let me click over to it. I'll go ahead and make up something. Uh, okay, it says, Well, 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 the little piss baby heard our show, did he? <laughs> wah, 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 please read more of my stories. How about no? Go fuck yourself. You dumb bitch. Yeah. That's, that's, that's not far off from other conversations that we've had with other people. <laughs> <laughs> oh I know I'm not even talking about fear fix stuff. I'm talking about just mod shit. I love when somebody gives shit on the mod mail for the creepypasta wiki, and then when I look back, their account is gone. I'm like, oh, yeah. I guess that took care of itself. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, yeah, he contacted you, they contacted you, and said, hey... Here's some other stuff that I've written as well. And we're going to read it and just uh, give some feedback. And uh, by the way, my wife really wants to get me pregnant. And mm-hmm. Yes, but also who wrote this? Short story one. There Short you know. story one. Okay. My wife wants to get me pregnant. My wife gave birth a year ago, and we went through it really well. Her name is Rose. God damn it. <laughs> we had... We had Wait. Wait, her name is Mia. Wait, no. <laughs> Shit. Miranda, ah. No, Evelyn. God damn it. We adapted, which I misread as adopted, and you guys interrupted me before I could continue oh, wow. on with my dyslexia. Mm-hmm. We adopted a baby out of her vagina. Mm-hmm. That's she has she explained that that's why it's black. The ba- yeah, I was just gonna Vaginal say the baby adoption. didn't look anything like me. She told me it was adopted. <laughs> anyway. Uh, we adapted and made the necessary changes in our lives to make it easier to having a baby. We mm. were both surprised how well we were both coping as parents. There were a few tough spots, but we got through it and showed up stronger on the other side. It's great being a parent. Well, it's great for me and my wife, anyhow. Not all couples can survive the baby stage of a relationship, <laughs> and the changes can take serious can, can seriously break people. I like that having a child is described as something you have to cope with. Yeah. <laughs> what, about, <laughs> what about the fact that Resident Evil 8 has a baby stage? <laughs> Baby stage. Get it a baby stage, like a like a water level, like a ice stage. I, it's got a baby I, stage. I personally, I just I don't want kids because I'm just I'm not into it at all, and that's how I would define being a parent is coping with having a child. It's not oh, it's a blessing. Nah, it sounds like you're trying to survive something. That hmm. sounds very difficult. Well, well you, you also run into the issue where like every other parent you meet is just like, yeah, Tell you shouldn't out. be a parent. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, you you really. Oh, boy. Sometimes you just meet people and you're just like, eugenics is wrong. Remember, eugenics is wrong. God well, and there's there's two types of people. There's, oh, you got married? Uh, where's your kid? When's when's the baby coming? And then there's, don't do this. Don't do this to yourself. <laughs> like, there's no middle ground. Abysme is afraid that his baby will come out half racist. What is it? Uh, <laughs> in the, uh, I don't know if I... He's, he's, also, he's also worried he's going to come out Mexican. <laughs> no! Uh-huh. A mixed race baby has Mexican. <laughs> have oh babies. no! No, they'll have all the fucking uh, advantages. I'm going to play that minority card. Um, Jesus I don't, Christ! I, I don't know if I if I brought this now, up before. So, wait, now, son. I know this is. I know this is your sixth birthday, but I wanted to sit you down and ask you: Can you give me some cards? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, give me I some need cards, you to go son. over and tell your friends that your dad is cool for a white guy. <laughs> no, <laughs> tell your da- like... tell your friends that your dad can say it. He has a card. <laughs> what? <laughs> what did you? What did your dad get you for for uh, your quinceanera? <laughs> oh, he got me this excellent giant rebel flag. <laughs> God damn it! Um, in the news, I don't know, a couple months ago or something. The I always forget their names, but the the royal couple who like uh, this, Joe Biden, mm-hmm. yes, Joe Biden and Champ, um, <laughs> Joe they, and Joe and Harry and whatever. But they like just said, "Hey, we're not royals anymore. We like give away our royalty or some shit." I don't and even know the board is like. Is. I will take this. I will take them. The um, weird thing is though, they 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 gave away their royalty and they just had like a raffle. And some guy from Iowa got it. It's pretty cool. <laughs> well, someone <laughs> was just a potato farmer. Yeah, I'm royalty now. 
<laughs> I, I, I own one eighth of England. Um, <laughs> Prince Festus, Prince Festus. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, we, I have a friend over in England, and there was just all this this drama about it, and how they were the, the couple was saying, "Oh, we got a lot of like discrimination or something because you know she's a technically a commoner or whatever." And Paprika just leans in and says, "Does that mean their baby's going to be half poor?" <laughs> yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> That's like that's beautiful, <laughs> fucking half poor. It, it also sounded like what their whole story sounded like massive amounts of bullshit. Yeah, it did. I don't know. Did it? <laughs> well, <laughs> didn't I, they say I, something like they they tried to discourage him from having a relationship with someone of color? Like I, I don't know. It sounds like uh, uh, it, I mean, it, who knows? Because uh, here, here's the here. Yeah, here, who knows? But here's my question: Was were people generally supportive? And it's just like. You know, Jeanette over here, who's racist, or like it sounds like th- <laughs> there was a Jeanette. lot of. It. It's just Jeanette. It's just Jeanette. It's just Mia and Jeanette over here. Duke Regent Jeanette has some issues. <laughs> Regent Jeanette. <laughs> so, so I'm just I'm just uh, skeptical of of the woe is me story from the royalty. And y- even if it were true, it's like that sucks. But you guys are going to be fine. You know, you're, you're royal. You could just be like, "Fuck you." Never mind. I'm back to being royalty. I take it back. Like, <laughs> I take it back now. Does it, does it make you mad? <laughs> like, you're really gonna have any problems in life? I take us uh, back as. <laughs> what? I resume the crown. Yes. I really am looking forward to like an elderly Prince Harry in Vegas, like playing the slots or something, and being like, you know, yes, bring me another lemon squeezer, you know, whatever the fuck drink he's having. You Just know, acting like a, like a real hammy British king, <laughs> dressed in like a polo and jean shorts and playing slots. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, that's okay. I'm getting <laughs> that's really confused. That's how it's going to look at 2075. <laughs> hey guys, guess what? Paragraph what? two. No. Paragraph two of five. My wife then started hinting to me about wanting a second child, and at first I was against it, but then warmed up to it because I have no agency. Mm-hmm. My wife then started getting excited, and she started getting baby things and preparing a room for the second baby. I wasn't doing anything during this. I was along for the ride. How many empty she rooms kept, do you have? Damn. Uh, so, you know what? <laughs> uh, you know, I'm going to save this for later because even after this second story, I am noticing certain trends and uh, just kind of writing flares that this author has yeah she kept asking me what kind of room i would like for the second baby this confused me as it is usually the mothers who get to decide what kind of baby room they would like she kept asking me about what colors i wanted and what kind of materials like carpets and rugs i wanted in the new baby room i laughed and said hey you are going to be the pregnant one so you get to decide how do we know this isn't just the same sex couple it's a good point hasn't said My wife looked at me in such horror and replied, (laughs) now you just picture Mia, what do you mean about me being the pregnant one again? I have already been pregnant, and so it's your turn now. I was confused. I then told her, I'm a man, I can't get pregnant. Oh, okay, there we go. And she became, some men can get pregnant. Some men can get pregnant. This is a woke podcast. We won't have any of this. Mm. This is woke Disney World. (laughs) (laughs) There it is. There it is. Woke Disney World. (laughs) Photo photo negative woke Disney World. (laughs) I'm pissed off that it wasn't photo negative Mickey on the front. God, that would be so Listen, Ben Garrison is an American hero. (laughs) (laughs) No. (laughs) Yes. An American zero. (laughs) He's in he's in siege. (laughs) Zero. And she became, I can't get pregnant, and she became more emotional and hostile and shouted, it's not fair that I got pregnant once and you are not going to have a go. And I told her to explain to me how a man could get pregnant, question mark. Uh, Depends depends on the man. Uh, (laughs) She she then told me. I could see Sargon of Akkad getting pregnant. (laughs) Go ahead. (laughs) <laughs> she then told me of the special treatment that can make men get pregnant as well, and she thought everyone knew about it. Uh, when I saw this treatment, I was shocked. This treatment only existed in her hometown in the whole world. <laughs> the babies the men gave birth to didn't come outright, but father, father deformed, and I looked at my wife and told her I'm not getting pregnant. We <laughs> argued back and forth. How it's not fair that she got pregnant and I haven't. That in the relationship, 
both must share the same experiences. There is a a bluntness to short story one's writing. Which was written first? Because, <laughs> oh, this was 12 days ago. Fuck. Yeah. Uh, th- th- there, there is a bluntness and a almost childlike... I, I, I'm struggling to find the words for it, but it's just... Everything is so played straight, even mm-hmm. though it's ridiculous, and it's becoming very charming the more I read it. It's an elegant <laughs> that's all, machine, essentially. <laughs> that's all I'm going to say. Uh, I stood my ground, and then my wife took our baby and ran away. Oh, that sucks. The next thing that happened to me was the townspeople of men and women, there's, there's <laughs> only the one, started wiping blood on my house windows. Blood that belonged to dead fiatuses. How do you know? Did you I, taste it or what? <laughs> <laughs> it's got that kind of orange tinge to it. I like the I, idea there's blood on the window. He steps out. Hmm, this won't do at all. Puts a finger through it, like his pinky finger. Puts it in his mouth, and then there's like this sudden look of shock on his face. Dead like, fetuses. Wait a minute. <laughs> I no. moved within my w- <laughs> I moved within my wife. <laughs> I would hope so. I moved within my wife in her hometown, where she knows everyone. People screaming that I am selfish for not wanting to get pregnant. People started leaving dead fetuses and wombs that have been taken out of women at front door. I have to get out of here. <laughs> okay, so now all of those forced abortions in China of little girls, not so bad, right? Mm-hmm. Put things in perspective for you. <sighs> this, I, I, this, this is a wonderful outline for what could be a fun story. This, Not that it wasn't uh, fun, but you know what I mean. This is a this is a very woke reboot of Wicker Man. <laughs> 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 oh, okay, so so what other what other uh, short story one stories are we reading? Uh, well, that one was pretty good. I say that we should do "Thank You Meditation Teacher." Uh, the full title is "Thank You, Meditation Teacher, for dressing me as a woman and impregnating me." That oh, I'm sensing a theme here. <laughs> <laughs> Take that back. We're going to do. How am I going to explain this to my landlord? Okay, yeah, yeah. Fuck it, let's do it. How am I going to explain this to my landlord? The prom is tomorrow. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I love how to see deep water wells <laughs> go. Close. <laughs> I love to see how deep water wells go, and I don't know why I find it so much fun. It's a fun hobby of mine, really, and I enjoy knowing how deep wells go. Sounds like somebody from the the village in Resident Evil 8, but go ahead. Sounds like a Stephen King character. (laughs) I travel all over the world, and whenever I see a well, I get excited because I know... Now, I just have to know how deep it is. A couple months ago, <laughs> a couple months of months ago, I found a well, and I it, then excitedly snatched a kid from the wandering mother and threw the kid down the well. <laughs> how deep is it? Deep is it? Deep is it? Ah! <laughs> By the scream, I was able to calculate how deep the well went. The scream got silent, and I knew exactly how deep the well was. I then decided to throw the screaming mother down the well just to make sure. I like to I like to picture this. I like to picture the main character of the story, the narrator, as a cryptid, and this is the mm-hmm. explanation for the seemingly random things he does. Mm-hmm. Like there's this creature out in the woods that throws you down a well, and it's like it's mysterious and blah blah. blah and then it turns out the story is I like to find out how deep wells are, <laughs> so I throw people. It j- at them. J- yeah, like the idea of <laughs> this character just having like <laughs> dog level thoughts of just like yeah. I want to go for a walk. I like the I like the kibbles. I want the kibbles. Yeah, and it's just like I want to know what's in that well. <laughs> What's in that well? I, I, I like to imagine that this is just a ch- time-tested tradition of, you know, how deep is our well, mm-hmm. because we forgot to write it down, so we just throw people down it. <laughs> My son, you don't understand. Back in the day, we didn't have long rulers, so we threw people down the well and measured the screams. <laughs> I've been throwing people down this well for hours, and it keeps getting more shallow. <laughs> <laughs> can't figure it out. <laughs> I thought it was 50 feet, but now it might be 45. <laughs> well, we have to explain this to our landlord. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's a good point. Like, I completely forgot the title of this story because it's about chucking people down wells. Uh, then a couple weeks later, I found another well, and I couldn't believe how lucky I was. I love finding lonely wells in the middle of nowhere. I snatched another person and dragged him to the well and threw him down the well. 
The well wasn't so deep as I could hear him asking someone for help. And to be honest, I only like deep wells. Well, yeah. used to certain deep wells have a certain character to them. And in my opinion, the deeper the well is, then the more higher they are in the hierarchy of wells. Shadow wells. Sh- shadow. Wow. wow. <laughs> shadow wells here. The- will- <laughs> oh my God! Is there a clone of Orson Wells called Shadow Wells? <laughs> like the Sonic the Hedgehog character to the this Shadow game. Wells. <laughs> Uh, I don't song. like champagne. <laughs> <laughs> I threw Sonic down a well. Shallow wells are at the bottom of the hierarchy. See this? I like this much better already because it's yeah. you know it, it. The other one had an outlandish premise, but this outlandish premise is like so out of left field that you can't. You almost almost can't go wrong with it. it it's from a deranged perspective that doesn't need to say I'm crazy. Let me right. explain why. Like it just is, and I appreciate that. Yeah, it's not like. Um, I, I worry about car accidents, so I make sure to throw people out in front of cars so they slow down. You know, like, you're like, okay, well, that's insane, but whatever. And then you get something like this, and you're like, okay, yeah, this is dialing it up to 10. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Then a couple of days ago, I think I found the deepest well in the world, and I don't know how I knew, but the aura and energy of this well gave, but the aura and energy this well gave off was immense. It's was, <laughs> it's was like the king of wells. <laughs> The king of Sumo Beach. <laughs> it was like the king of the wells. <laughs> What's wrong with this well? Is it too shallow? Do you mind if I kick it? <laughs> What's wrong with this well? Is there a kid in it? Oh my god, there's a dead kid in this well. <laughs> <laughs> he jumped in his well and took off. It's was, was that Timmy? There's someone down the well? You threw him in the well? <laughs> Good dog. Good dog. <laughs> I like the idea Timmy is going and telling instead of Lassie. What's that, Timmy? <laughs> yeah. God damn it. God damn it. <laughs> Rafe, Rafe! What's that, Timmy? <laughs> Lassie Timmy, was why never are you real. Like a dog. <laughs> oh my god, what if Lassie was never real? It was always Timmy, and when he was switched personalities, Timmy was quote unquote in the well. That's the fucking uh, uh, Twilight Zone episode yeah. we never got. It was like the king of the wells, and it was definitely majestic by how deep it was. I definitely had to throw someone down this particular well, and it grabbed another man and threw him down the well. When I saw him falling, it felt like he had stopped midair, but then he carried on falling. Sometimes I would be able to hear his screams, and then all of a sudden there was nothing but silence. And then a couple of minutes later, his screams would be hearable again. Hmm. Okay. Do you think that uh, possibly they might find out about pits and then just be like, yeah, I used to be in the wells, and then <laughs> I kind of matured, now I'm into pits. Hmm. Yeah. Wells was so 2010, I'm sorry. DP, are you trying to get people into pits again? <laughs> We all know about how you want to stick your face in Tracer's pits. <laughs> um, Sombra is my waifu now. <laughs> now? Yeah. Hack the it pits. It was a prior. It was Tracer, and then oh, it was Tracer. Som- Somber, Sombers came into existence. <laughs> Som- I like that Somber. <laughs> it wasn't Diva? No, no, no. I Are am Are you just like diva. playing Diva? No, I just like, I am the Diva. Uh, so Diva is my self-insert. <laughs> I like the idea of you going up to to, uh, to two women and saying, so which one of you is the diva in this relationship? <laughs> which one is the sombra? <laughs> doesn't work uh, no, like that. <laughs> I should have asked um, lesbian that in the post-game chat for Dead by Daylight, but well. <laughs> shit. So, um, which one of you is the butt farter and which one is the huffer? <laughs> butt fart. Uh, he was ranked I, two. I feel so bad number for Number two? Mm-hmm. <laughs> he was. He was. <laughs> It's so great. I do, I do like the idea of just obscene catcalling that's apropos of nothing. It's like, oh, girl, you want some corn dogs? <laughs> what? That's just, a little too phallic. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah you, it really does have to be like somewhere out there. It's just like, Which one girl. do you want? It's hot, chili. Which... Hey, baby girl, you want to ride the Metro? <laughs> we can hop the turnstile, huh? <laughs> Oh, you look like a barista, huh? <laughs> Sir, this is a Starbucks. Of course I look like a barista. Ooh, <laughs> baby, show me them documents! <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Also, sometimes I could see him fa- falling, and then he would appear to only reappear again minutes later. Disappear to only reappear minutes later. That makes more sense. I was like, well, they're there. Just, just another person show up. This well was really hard to calculate. A couple of days later, I go home to my to my flat at the top floor of the building. And this guy I threw down the deepest well had crashed through <laughs> my ceiling flat. 
No. Flat nope. ceiling. Yeah. Flat mm. ceiling. There we go. How am I going to explain this to my landlord? Hey. I'm also realizing um, all of these, I believe, are posted on Short Scary Stories, which is has a 500 word limit. So yeah. you and I, frankly, I think Short Story One is doing frankly, a great job with frankly the, with the word limit. I can't hear the word frankly and not think of Trump now. <laughs> frankly, I've read Short Story One. It's fantastic. Fantastic creepy pastas. I actually don't know, frankly. Never met him. <laughs> but uh I, I heard he's a big supporter. Yeah. And if he's not, fuck him. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. He Pretty didn't much. want any corn dogs. So I guess the guy went into the well so far that he looped. Like, yeah, it was a well like that no was. And... It was the ultimate well. It was, yeah, yeah it was a an interdimensional portal or something. Well, <laughs> I love that the story has two conceits. One is just like, yeah, there's <laughs> there's an interdimensional well, and there's a monster that likes throwing things down wells. <laughs> I, I I really like the fact that our protag is deranged and makes no apologies and no explanations for it. Yeah, I mm-hmm. like throwing people down wells. Fuck yeah. it, I don't care. Not even, I, not even that. I like wells, and I throw people down them to find out how deep they are. That's it. I, right. You know, it's it's always good to have two different, like, unrelated kinds of horrors to just throw you off of, like, mm-hmm. yeah, there's a, there's a, it's a, the Wendigo with a gun thing, as Slimebeast would put it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and it's making me think back to the first short story, one short story we read, and I, I wish I was more lucid during it, but, like, th- there's definitely a style to their writing, and like I said... I, I, it's very charming. I'm really beginning to like it. Okay, this is thank you, meditation teacher. Thank you, meditation teacher. Thank, thank you, you Metamucil, for keeping me regular. Mm. Thank you, meditation teacher. Now I'm picturing I, Alanis Morissette doing a Metamucil commercial. <laughs> oh God! She's yo, getting up there. yo, yo! Ought to try this. <laughs> Fuck off. Alanis Morissette here, here for lesbian butt farts brand <laughs> Metamucil. Sure, Brandon, why not? <laughs> I'm just picturing you just post that on Twitter and everybody's like, are you okay? What's that? Okay, that'll that'll but... be the ending sketch for this episode, just you watch. Oh, sure. God. Now sure. you have to write it. Could Chelsea do no. an Alanis Morissette impression? <laughs> I know it's she could probably she could probably do an Avril Lavigne. <laughs> You'll shit like rain on your wedding day. <laughs> she was like a lesbian. Ride. She had bed farts. Can I make it any more obvious? That's Avril Lavigne. What the fuck? That's, he just I, that's, I just said that. Pay attention. Oh no, no I was they talking. are related. I can't I can't pay attention if I'm already talking over you. <laughs> Alanis Morissette and Avril Lavigne are related by. Blood. Marriage? Oh. <laughs> butt farts? <laughs> but God damn. Lesbian butt farts. Whoa, oh. <sighs> now, that's, is that singer related? I don't know who made that song. Who Billy made Passionate Idol. Kisses? <laughs> Billy Idol. Um, oh. Billy Eilish Kid, made Passionate Kid, Kisses. Kid, <laughs> Kid Rock. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Passionate Kisses. Oh, okay, fuck, My fuck this episode. My name is Butt Fart. <laughs> What a fucking terrible episode of the Fear Fiction podcast, okay? We can still salvage it with the story. Oh, yeah, this is going to save it. I just want to thank my meditation teacher for teaching me yoga, and especially meditation. (laughs) I used to be a non-believer of meditation, and then I listened to the Joe Rogan podcast, and he said to try this meditation program. But now I am a practitioner of meditation. I cannot believe the benefits of meditation, Mm. and it has changed my life forever. The calmness that it brings me is unbelievable, and no matter the situation or how serious something is, meditation helps me manage the fear and worry. What if we mentally replace meditation with Metamucil? Mm. Metamucil helps me manage my fear and worry. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Valscarium helps me manage the fear and worry. (laughs) God damn it. You will fear... You see, fear will always be an element in our lives, and instead of trying to throw it away, we should learn to manage it accordingly. You got to poop. You just got to learn to manage it. Hmm. All People right, who don't me. know what Metamucil is are going to be confused. For abyss- all the Zoomers out there, do you want to explain? <laughs> we want to get regular. Try some Metamucil. Just fucking bing Metamucil, and then take it. It makes your poops good. Zoomers are killing the Metamucil industry by eating it. <laughs> By stealing it. 
by by eating chia seed instead. <laughs> uh, Abysme, do you mind if I take the next paragraph? Okay, cool. Of course. Of course Whenever I see someone meditating, I can't help but wonder what they're thinking. I throw a child at them and... <laughs> <laughs> oh. I throw them down a well and I wait for their screams. <laughs> Uh, you see, when my father got beat up by some gang, my father. Yeah. left, right, and center, he bruised up to the core. That was an awkward sentence. He wandered home, all crying and begging and shit like a giant baby for help, <laughs> but my mother just laughed at him, calling him a pathetic man. I'm noticing a lot of parental strife in these stories. Yeah. I it's, think it's becoming worrisome. It's 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 a lot of the uh YouTube algorithm weird baby video kind of yeah. vibes. Father finger, father finger, where are you? In the well, Metamucil, in the well. Metamucil. Yeah. <laughs> so now I, I got to poo. I think you I think we're mis reading this i think we're misunderstanding it though i think the father got beat up and when he came home the mother says that's what you get for dressing up as pathetic man <laughs> and trying to you stop get for crying. wearing a dress outside the house <laughs> pathetic man uh, the gang that beat up my father belonged to my mother's secret boyfriend what the fuck <laughs> the king of zuma beach <laughs> this just got awesome yeah. when my father got himself on the sofa my mother mocked my father and told him she has been doing w- what she has been doing with her boyfriend double are you secretly short story one? <laughs> That's very probable. Because this is... I'm seeing some similarities. This hurt my father, and when my mother's boyfriend came into the house and shot my father so that my mother can be with him forever, I was in a state of meditation, and I felt calm under such duress. Hmm. This is... The story this of is, a girl. This is batshit crazy, and I love it. This is the story of a girl who had a boyfriend who started a gang. <laughs> My father looks so sad just standing there, but you'll absolutely love him when he's shot dead. Because he's dead. Yeah. Then, a couple of weeks later, when my mother started crying for my father and regretting what she had done, helping her boyfriend kill my father, she started arguing with her boyfriend. She got sick of her boyfriend quickly. And as she just couldn't take enough of the boyfriend's weird ways of constantly having blood on his clothes and constantly (laughs) drinking out in pubs with people he had killed. Wait. With people he had killed. Yeah. So, uh, let me buy you a drink. Uh, your head's come off. I'll just stick that back on there. You're a good guy. Look at you. Well, you can, well, win some bets at the bar. Are you dead? Do you mind if I kill you and then <laughs> buy you a drink? <laughs> Wait a minute. This best friend is dead. I'm out of here. <laughs> like, the, 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 the sentence clause is fucked up because it's referring to the blood and the clothes. It's from the people that they killed, but it comes after the drinking in the pubs, so it's confusing. I get it, but just a note. I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I really want the mother to start a new gang with a new boyfriend, though, to kill him, though. The chain continues. Who Who is <laughs> this uh, charismatic goddess who just has boyfriends who just start gangs and then murders her husbands? It's kind of awesome. D- De- Dead Liqua? <laughs> Lady D. Lady D. Trusted. Yeah. <laughs> My father, who was now dead, was part of that social group that hangs out or hangs around with my mother's boyfriend. Wait, he's still taking the father out for drinks after he killed him? Oh, yeah. I mean, oh, guys, I'm stroking out. Yeah. This is, I need a diagram. <laughs> a D-I-E dash O-gram. Throughout this ordeal, meditation helped me stay calm and sane and helped me manage my emotions. Thank you for this, my meditation teacher. I, I, I keep forgetting that meditation is the central crux of the story because we have this amazing B-plot happening over here. <laughs> This short story has a B-plot. <laughs> this is crazy. <sighs> I say, So I tell you all of this about my weird well obsession. I tell you that, uh, man, the guy just fell through my roof. Um, <laughs> then you sound mother... like You sound like, some, like an escaped mental patient has been chased by the police, by the authorities, and he entered the backstage of a comedy club and had to then <laughs> pretend he was a performer. <laughs> I tell you, I like throwing people down wells, and, ah, you know, they just fall through my roof, and, uh... <laughs> oh, anyway. Uh, that's my, uh, 15. Uh, have a good night. Tip your waiters. Oh, uh, then the... Then, hmm, then when my mother got killed by her boyfriend, he dropped her into some pond, not a well. Mm-hmm. I was all alone, but I metamuseled and kept control. Mm-hmm. Both my parents, who are dead now, hang around with my mother's ex-boyfriend in pubs and clubs. Hmm. 
They're they ghosts? still have they still have some kind of eye on me, and my grandparents aren't so bad. If Metamucil wasn't around, my anger would have made me do something incredibly stupid, and most likely I would have ended up dead and part of the social group that hangs around with my mother's ex-boyfriend. Hmm. This this is approaching happy, happy levels of logic. Of of dissociating, yeah, of like yeah. dissociating. Yeah, man, it's, I'm enjoying, like, seriously, I know we joke a lot, but I will take befuddling stories like this over a 15-part no sleep where it turns out there was a cryptid in the forest or something, um, because this is just so much more engaging. Isn't it kind of, isn't it ironic, don't you think, that no sleep tends to put you to sleep? Yeah. You, know. you just click off it in the first two paragraphs. Thank you for this, my meditation teacher, but you yourself should have listened to your own advice on being calm and collected. Maybe then you wouldn't have acted so st- acted too stupidly and angrily. <laughs> <laughs> and angry. <laughs> and angry. When you tried to kill my mother's ex-boyfriend when he killed your boyfriend. What is God happening? God damn! <laughs> what is happening? Where there is a chain. Is- Continues. Someday, Jesus. there will only be boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> the only person left. Most importantly, you wouldn't have ended up dead and part of the dead gang that hangs around with my mother's ex-boyfriend, so please stop asking me for help. Can we name this episode My Mother's Ex-Boyfriend, please? Yeah. Oh, boy. So it was about ghosts. And are they confusing meditation for, like, psychic communal with the paranormal or something? No, I think they, they know that meditation is, like, a different term, but, like... Yeah. They, their form of meditation does let them commune with the dead, I guess, is the idea. Oh, okay. Moving on to the next one. Mold. No. Mold. I'm, Let's see. Answer. Satisfied. Everything is mold. There's only... I'm satisfied. It's all mold. <laughs> okay. I, I really want to read train, 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 and then eat like a fat shit. How about we raid, we raid train, train, train on the next episode of the Fear Fiction Podcast? Why? Oh, very well. Very well, huh? Hey, uh, very fuck. boyfriend, uh, uh, pregnant. That amusal. Cool. <laughs> this has been the Fear Fiction Podcast. Your hosts are Abysme, Dead Palette, and Slime Beast. Music by Abysme. Art by C.F. Comer. Voice over by Atticus Jackson. Edited by Elias the Intern. Subscribe to Fear Fic on YouTube to stay up to date on new episodes. Hey, what's up, gamers? It's your boy, Noobslayer69420. Uh, I wanted to make this video for anyone who missed the last Twitch stream and just uh, just kind of go over my thoughts on the new Dead by Daylight killers from this newest DLC chapter. I don't want to dwell too much on it because I need to get back to speedrunning Resident Evil 9, House of Keys Deluxe Edition, semicolon Leon's Revenge, but let's go. So this was pretty unprecedented. Behavior added three new killers. That's nine new perks, but no new survivors. Not sure what this is going to do to balancing, but whatever, I guess. First up, we've got Jeff the Killer. I honestly thought this was just a reskin of Legion, but to my surprise, it's a wholly new killer. He's got a hood, his face looks like it has face paint on it, and he stabs people, so he's pretty much just the Legion. Behavior is getting so lazy with these licensed properties, I swear. Jeff's kit is also really redundant. He has a perk called Go to Sleep, which can insta down only the obsession, and you only get one obsession per match, so this is kind of stupid. But you have uh, 15 seconds to get that survivor to a hook, or you suffer from a two minute stun. I don't even know what to say other than this is bullshit and just encourages tunneling. What's worse is that he repeatedly says go to sleep the entire time you're carrying the survivor to the hook. And he even looks at the survivor and says it one more time after hooking him. It's just, this wastes so much time that you don't have. Can we talk about his lines? He has more in-game lines than any other killer combined. He's always saying edgy shit like, am I beautiful mommy? And you're a bully? And where's Liu? What fucking name is that? But does this make sense to anyone? Please tell me in the comments. I'm not even going to go into his other perks, items, or add-ons because they suck and no one wants to use them. Can you seriously see anyone using excerpt from a local newspaper or ha 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 
Ridiculous. Bleach is pointless, and stained white hoodie would be great on Billy, but I digress. Anyway, the second killer is Slenderman. Of the three, Slender is probably the best, which isn't saying much, uh, but I appreciate how on theme everything is. His main ability is a mix of hag and nurse's teleport, but it's tied to the eight pages left around the map. If the survivors find a page, they get a 2% boost to all actions, but it also increases the distance and frequency Slender can teleport. Really good trade-off here, and I think you'll see a lot of Slender mains in the future. His best perk is by far digital artifacts. Anytime two or more survivors are working on a gen, they get visual distortion during the skill checks. This is a great way to fight gen rushing. His second perk, with arms wide open, is decent, if not a bit overpowered, so expect a nerf. When he kicks a gen, if a survivor is within 16 meters, they are forced to look at Slenderman for two seconds. It's great if you can take someone by surprise, but useless if they're behind a wall, because line of sight has to be available. His last perk is Slender Mansion. I don't get this one at all. If a survivor is hiding in a locker more than 32 meters away, they get transported to a mansion for five seconds, have to do a skill check to stop this really cringy piano music, and then they leap out of the locker. What even is this, and how can it be used effectively? It's got a 120 second cooldown, so it won't happen often, but... Yeah, I don't know. The third killer is... A white ball. I appreciate that his design is very different from other killers, but where do I even start? Ball is shorter than everything in the game, so he can sneak up on everyone, but he can't stab through windows. He can sort of bounce off terrain like Blight, but it's got a long delay. His special ability is to bounce more. He can bounce over windows and pallets, but it's really hard to time. He's constantly saying weird, inane shit all the time, like, I am ball, you locked me in an elevator, and other lines that have zero context. I I don't even know what this killer is licensed from. Ball's perks are just the same thing three times, which is to modify how you bounce. He has no add-ons, so I'm not even sure how to make a build recommendation. I really think behavior has gone insane. This killer is garbage, and doesn't even have a perk that is teachable because no one else is a bouncing white ball. So that's my video gamers, uh, hope you enjoyed it because I kinda hate this new DLC. It cost me $6.66 for each killer, not worth the money whatsoever. Just go spend that on Funko Pops or something, I don't know. This is Noob Slayer signing off. Catch me on Twitch and make sure to stab that like button. Fuck. Do you know guys know about Coffeezilla? No. Cocky what? Cockneyzilla. Coffeezilla. It's a, it's a it's a British dub of Godzilla. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh no. No, Coffeezilla is a YouTube channel that basically debunks scammers. So there's a bunch of people that are doing scams like, "Hey guys, hey, I'm here in my garage with this car." Um all of those kind of like self-help guru scammer types Mm -hmm. he just debunks them and i absolutely enjoy it he gets all kinds of people butt mad there's one that he did about a guy named jay mazzini who was just like promising to give away bunches of money for no apparent reason like just because he wanted to give he was just a generous guy and wanted to give back to the community of course (laughs) and he was just like following this guy for a month and then eventually said guy gets busted on unrelated charges and his whole world just comes crumbling down around him. And you just get to see like the footage of him realizing he's going to jail for 20 years. Jeez. Oh, no. So good. Good Lord. It's, just, it's, um, it's a little bit of karma in the world. It's excellent. Hmm. He so- also just kind of like goes over like people scamming in terms of like, hey, you know, follow me for investing advice but this isn't financial advice but follow me for financial oh, advice. god and like good buy into my crypto scam for legal reasons wink i have to say wink that this isn't financial advice you wink. won't make millions of dollars wink yeah <laughs>